Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse News. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the craziest to happen in running this week. This week's stories include Cocodona 250 results, John Kelly's Wainwright's FKT, and a new women's strolling gym course record. First off, welcome back to the show. If you're new here, this show aims to cover the best stories in running each and every week. Since it's been a while, we're covering some of my favorites from the month of May. We'll kick things off with a look back at the second edition of the Cocodona 250 Ultra Marathon, which ran on a modified course this year due to the outbreak of the Crooks Fire near Prescott, Arizona. The fire was burning on course near mile 65 and forced a reroute. Thankfully, the fire is now out and the race went off with minimal to no air quality issues. Due to the arguably easier course, we saw significantly faster winning times on both the women's and men's sides. Annie Hughes, coming down to the desert from Leadville, ran faster than last year's overall winner, Michael Versteeg, to win the ladies' race and place third overall in 71 hours, 10 minutes. Second lady was Lauren Jones of Atlanta in 78.34, and third was Flagstaff local Sarah Ostazewski in 84.21. For the men, I was intrigued to see what Joe McConaughey could do out here on this course and at the 200 mile plus distance. He's been successful at a wide range of distances, including short distance track, 100K and 100 mile ultras, as well as mid to long range FKTs like the Long Trail, Arizona Trail, Pacific Crest Trail, and Appalachian Trail. Well, he delivered in a big way with a win and the first sub 60 hour time finishing in 59 hours, 28 minutes, over six hours ahead of second place, Michael McKnight. Third male was Matt Smith. Just a quick personal note to everyone who came out and participated in some way or tuned in online. Thank you all for supporting the vision and dream of this event. It was amazing to see everyone show up and hopefully take something away from the experience. Stay tuned for year three to take place May 1st through the 6th, 2023. Fun story regarding Cocodona fourth place female finisher, Rhoda Smoker. Just over a week removed from her 89 hour, six minute finish, she lined up and won the annual Massanutten Mountain Trails 100 in Virginia in 25 hours, 35 minutes. That sort of double is just mind boggling. We do have to give a quick Beast Coast shout out to Massanutten overall winner, Paul Jacob of Washington, DC who won the race in 1747. And last but not least, Bob Gaylord, who finished the Massanutten at age 73 in 34.59.59. Yes, just one second under the 35 hour cutoff. Funny enough, he just eked out DFL by six seconds as John Taylor, age 60, finished just ahead of him. If anyone has a video of these finishes, we'd absolutely love to share them with the Outhouse Nation. We've been covering the Strolling Gym 40 miler for several years now and the saga relating to the chase to break this event's long-standing course records. A few years back, race director Lazarus Lake decided to start a prize pool for anyone who could break Andy Jones's 1991 record of 359.26. This stood the test of time for many years with no one coming remotely close until Scott Breeden's 4.14.30 in 2015. Prize pool began at $1,000 and grew by 1,000 each year until broken. Zach Beaven jumped in for a shot in 2019 running a 4.07.42, which at the time was the second fastest time ever. He returned in 2021 and demolished the 40 mile race with a finish in 3.55.44 which now stands as the new best time. The prize pool has now returned down to $1,000 after Zach won 6,000 with his time. For the ladies, a prize purse was added a couple years later in the same format and stood at $3,000 going into this year's race. That was enough to attract world record holder Camille Heron to give this Tennessee classic a shot. She showed up and not only won the race outright, but lowered Leah Thorvalson's ladies course record by 48 seconds to 444.01. One final shout out related to Strolling Jim, we got word that Dink Taylor now has 36 Strolling Jim finishes out of what we can tell are 44 editions of the race 
dating back to 1979. More Beast Coast news with the results from the brutally iconic Cruel Jewel 100 race in Georgia's Blue Mountains. This hard rock qualifier is actually 106 miles long and features 33,000 feet of climb. I can attest that these stats are real and the race is brutal. I had my fill just running the 50 mile variant. This year saw some most excellent performances and we'll start on the ladies side with Liz Canty who lowered the women's course record held by Angela Chartel since 2015 with a win in 2634. She was fifth overall. On the men's side, we saw Joey Miller take the win with only the fourth ever sub 24 hour performance and third best all time in 234042. Next, we flip to the West Coast and the inaugural Samo 100, or Santa Monica Mountains 100, put on by Kiera Henninger. She has held a slew of races across these mountains over the past decade, but this was the first 100 miler she's organized here. Nick Allen took the win on what looked like a brutal course in 2336, with only one woman's finisher, Silvia Domaraska, 2931. There were 20 finishers with a large number of DNFs, 52 according to Ultra Sign Up. The race started in Point Mugu State Park and was an out and back along parts of the Ray Miller and Sean O'Brien courses, which also means part of the famed Backbone Trail. Aravipa's inaugural Ram Party up and around Rampart Reservoir above Colorado Springs launched this May with Devin Yanko taking the 50 mile win in 804, placing third overall. Luke Landis of Denver was the men's winner in 718, and Nick Curry second in 739. Allison Baca, local to Colorado, was second female in 847. Moving on to a couple of world records set this month. First, Alexander Sorokin was back in the news, this time moving down a bit in distance and setting a new 100K world record. The man has been demolishing records from 100 miles to 12 and 24 hours in recent years. He took to the Centurion Running Track 100 and completed the distance in six hours, five minutes, 41 seconds, which equates to a 5.53 per mile pace or 3.39 per kilometer. The question is, where does Sorokin go from here? Will he aim to keep lowering his current times and records in the 100 mile to 24 hour range, or perhaps shoot for something longer? Speaking of longer and records, we also saw a new 48 hour world record, this time for women. Patricia Berznowska ran 250.611 miles or 403.32 kilometers in under 48 hours at Poland's Ultra Park weekend race. This is six kilometers better than the previous record. No woman has ever broken the 400 kilometer slash 250 mile barrier in 48 hours before. Patricia, if you aren't familiar with her, also holds the records for the Badwater 135 and Spartathlon. Now for something on the opposite end of the distance spectrum. We saw this past week, Gary Martin, a high school senior in Pennsylvania, run a 357.98 mile. He's the first high schooler to break four minutes in the mile without the aid of pacers in a normal meet since legendary Jim Ryan in 1965. Ryan's time from back then was 358.3. .3. Looking ahead, we've got an exciting summer of racing back in action including the Golden Trail Series. The first will take place this weekend on May 29th in Zagama. Although maybe not a favorite for the podium of this fast-paced race, Courtney DeWalter will be taking part for the first time, so be sure to follow her for some of the action on social media. We'll recap the standings after this first race next week, but we're pumped that the World Series will close out this September right here in the United States with back-to-back -back weekend races at the Pikes Peak Ascent, and the Flagstaff Sky Peaks 26K. Speaking of shorter distance mountain running, the WMRA, or World Mountain Running Association, kicked off its own series in Ireland this past weekend at the Seven Sisters Skyline 30K, where we saw American Olivia Amber take the win and set a course record in 407 on the ladies side with her fellow American teammate, Catherine O'Regan, second in 433. First of all, congratulations. Wonderful victory, excellent performance. So, how did that go for you today? It went really well. The bog definitely got me a lot. <laughs> um, I, yeah, it was just an amazing experience. I've never done a race like it, and it's honestly one of my favorite races I've ever done. So.
Rory Long won on the men's side in 329, he's from Ireland, with Paddy O'Leary also representing his home country in second in 336. Rory Long, I'm from Dublin, Ireland, and just won the 3K in the 766 skyline here in Donegal. And how'd your race go today? Tell it us a little well. bit about it. Um, we had a nice pack for, I'd say, the first 20K, myself, Paddy and Sean. Right. Uh, I just tried to run my own race, just kept my nutrition solid, kept getting gels in me. And I was happy enough just to kind of pull away towards the last climb and then just try and keep the, the lead through the last few k's. But uh, it's a beautiful course, really wild. Uh, I'd really recommend anyone to come and try it. We're closing in on the final couple weeks of training for the 2022 Western States 100. Anyone see anything good out there? Taggart Van Etten chimed in on Twitter that Arlen Glick has been putting in some vert. His past two weeks have been close to 130 miles with over 20,000 feet of climb, with plenty of deer field repeats for 500 foot Ohio climb. Local to Phoenix, Scott Trayer has been putting together a nice set of 100 plus mile weeks in the desert heat that should serve him well, and accumulating a plethora of Strava crowns along the way. Last but not least, Flagstaffer Trueheart Brown has had an unconventional approach with seemingly more miles on the bike than on two feet, but with plenty of weight training and conditioning. Will be fun to see if he shoots to the front at States or plays this one a little more sly. Speaking of Western States, anyone headed to camp this weekend? I had a blast there a few years back, but won't be making the trip this time around. If you go, please record some videos and send them in to the Outhouse Nation. We'll share them next week. Woo! Let's wrap up this super episode with a few FKT reports before we sign off. First is John Kelly's unbelievable Wayne Wright's FKT. This was supposedly a last hurrah before he moves back stateside, and he certainly delivered. I've honestly lost count of the number of these insanely long multi-day efforts John has attempted or completed, but they're all damn impressive. The Wainwrights includes all 214 peaks in England's Lake District National Park, and this route links them all up in a squiggly peak bagging binge that had John travel around 360 miles on foot and climb over 123,000 feet to set the FKT in five days, 12 hours, 14 minutes. And finally, we have a new stateside FKT as Kimber Maddox set a new rim-to-rim -rim best time in Grand Canyon, besting Alicia Vargo's 2017 time. Kimber ran the 21 miles across from the north rim of, of the canyon to the south rim in 314.24, shaving five minutes off Alicia's time. Thank you for tuning in to episode 202 of Outhouse News. Be sure to subscribe to get the latest episode. And if you'd like to support the show, please join Steep Life Media on Patreon, where you'll enjoy bonus content each and every week. We'd like to mention by name our $25 level supporters and up. At the $100 level, Brian Sands. At the $50 level, Squirrels Nut Butter, Mark Grabowski, Peter and Patty Curry. $25 level, Carrie Savage, Grandpa Man, Michael Perez, Steve De La Cruz, and York Beach Runner. Finally, if you'd like to own this one-of-a-kind custom pair of Jam Jam sunglasses or shop for merchandise, head over to mountainoutpost.com. Have a shitty week.